What's up creatives, welcome to The Tiffy Show. Today I will be telling you how to talk about yourself on a first date and giving you actionable steps. If you haven't, make sure that you turn on notifications so that you know when I post a video. I like to post about travel, dating, and everything in between, so if that's your jam, hit that subscribe button and let's get to it. First dates can feel like a job interview. I know I've been on my fair share of them. And like most job interviews, if you really, really want the job, you wanna come off as irresistible and charming and someone that is confident and believes in themselves. So I am going to let you know steps that you can take so that you come off the first date with the best chances of getting that second date because the last thing that you wanna do on a first date is be boring. It is a crime, do not do it, let's try to be charming, let's try to make it fun. So let's talk about the actionable steps that you can take so that your first date is a success and sets you up for a second date, more dates, lots of dates. I don't know, you might wanna be a player. I'm not gonna judge you, but I'm gonna help you talk about yourself on a first date. Lean positive. A first date is where a person is trying to get to know if they want to spend time with you for the long haul. And in a lot of cases, just spend time with you on this date. Believe me, girls and guys can dip out on a date. Hey, you know what? My friend is sick, I gotta go. Go to the bathroom, catch an Uber. There's a lot of ways that they can shorten a date if they're not feeling it. So I'm trying to give you steps to make it successful. In that, you don't wanna come off as a downer. I'm not telling you to be fake, I'm telling you to lean positive. Now, if you are a person that's like, I have no idea how to lean positive, that's not what I do, you need to check yourself. <laughs> this is a skill that you just need to learn in life because there's nothing sexy about self-pity, self-deprecation, complaining, negativity. You don't wanna hang out with that all day and neither does your date. So I need you to always lean positive from when they're asking you questions. So if they ask you, how is your job or what you like to do for fun? This is not the time to tell them that you hate your job, it's soul crushing, it sucks, you you know, you know, hate it so much. Because remember, everything that you do is a representation of you. So if you are at a job that you hate and that it is just soul crushing, they're going to wonder why you're staying at that job. If you hate going to the beach and you just don't understand why people would always go there, it's so gross, they're going to wonder why you don't see the cool aspects of the beach and see the peacefulness or like the waves. So you need to lean positive. How do you do that? If you do hate your job, for example, instead of just being like you hate your job, state a fact and then pivot positive. So I'm going to give you an example. Instead of just being like, I hate my job, you can say, I work in accounting, which leads me to a great vacation benefit that I get to go and travel the world for two weeks every year. So I love that my job allows me to save money so that I can travel. What are some cool places that you've been lately? And there you go. That is a pivot to positive. You did not complain about your job. You just stated the fact of what you do for a living and switched the conversation. And that is a trick that you can do to be positive. You are not being fake. You are not pretending to be someone that you're not. You are just letting them know what you do. And when I say lean positive, definitely work on this aspect of yourself if you have a hard time doing it. You can do role playing in your room. You kind of know if you've been on dates, what questions are going to come up and you can start to form a positive spin on your usual questions. You're having a hard time with that. This is some soul searching time to really figure out why your personality might be like this or how to change you know, how, your outlook on life because having a po more positive outlook on life will actually help you in attracting better people, you know, better experiences and all that good stuff. But that's something for another video. Right now, your main focus is just to lean positive and always try to think of a cooler or nicer, charming way to state the facts. Keep it conversational. I know that we're talking about how you talk about yourself on a first date, but a big thing that a lot of people do is they start to just list off and ramble on for 30 minutes about themselves and ultimately everybody likes to talk about themselves. But in that, if you feel like that you're doing most of the talking and the other person's not, and it's a job interview and not a conversation, you need to step back and you need to ask the other person a question. The best way to do that is when they ask you the question, you can answer it and then, you know, have some questions in there to get the conversation going. Now, when I say this, I do not mean throw their question back at them. That is not fun. No one wants to say, what's your favorite food? And then you say, what's your favorite food? Every time 
there's a question and it's just going like that. Instead, if someone says, hey, what's your favorite food? You can be like, well, actually my favorite food is Italian food. I went to this really great place when I was in Italy with my family and it had the best pasta I've ever had in my life. Have you been to Italy before? That is how you do it. You don't just throw back the question that they asked you. And then you have a conversation and it should go smoothly. You're showing that on top of your amazing, charming personality that you care about learning about the other person. That makes them feel good and they won't leave this date being like, wow, I just did another job interview. Because believe me, I've been on enough dates to know that a lot of them turn out this way. I know it seems like I'm teaching you how to have a conversation and this is what a conversation is, but Lord, so many of you need to know this is, this is how you do a conversation. You should leave this date with like a balanced, equal exchange of information where you know them as a well-rounded person and they know you as a well-rounded person. Be honest. Think of it this way. If this is the person that you are going to spend the rest of your life with and you don't really know, it could be the one, you wanna start it off with honesty to the best of your ability. That means you don't wanna lie about having an expensive car that you don't have or your job making way more money than you have because all of that will come back to bite you in the so start this date with honesty. And you can be honest and still be a kind person and a nice person. And what I mean by that is, if your date happens to mention that they love cats and cats are their favorite, they are a cat person, they will have millions of cats for the rest of their life and you are allergic and you will die if you're around a cat, do not use this time to pretend that you like cats. You need to let them know that you're allergic to cats because remember this first date is about compatibility. You don't wanna waste someone's time and you don't want them to waste your time. So let them know, you can let them know, know nicely. Like I've always been fond of cats, but I'm allergic. So unfortunately I could never really have a cat of my own. That's not something I can have in my future. That's a nice way of letting them know. And then they have the ability to make the decision if they wanna go on a second date and you owe that to them. You owe people honesty so that they can get to know the real you and make a decision on if they want to date the real you, not a fake version of you. You don't want to date a person that has cats and you're dying every time you go over to their place because your body is just like blowing up and have hives and like allergies and they don't know what's wrong with you and you don't want to tell them that you don't like cats. Like that's just a, like, that sounds like a headache. So keep it honest on the first date. If you have disagreements, let them know. You can do all of this nicely and you can come off genuine and honest and then everyone's making their own decisions at the end of this if they want to have a second date. So just remember that and especially just remember that if you're hiding the fact that you have kids or that you have a baby mama or anything like that, lay it out on the table if the questions arise so that that person can know all about you. Don't get too heavy too fast. I repeat, don't do it. A lot of times, you know, first dates can be nervous. You don't know what to say. You you can feel like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. It's okay to tell your date that you're nervous. It's not the best idea though to let go of all your emotional baggage from your childhood up into what your ex-girlfriend or boyfriend did to you. Any emotional scars that you have that are very, very big need to be left out of the first date. And that is because the first date is just lighthearted and fun. It is just getting to know a person, seeing if you're, you know, got that chemistry, seeing if you're a bit compatible. And then later down the line, you learn more about a person. I'm not talking about, you know, the little things that I just mentioned with being honest. I'm talking about your emotional baggage. Like your dad left you at three and it's changed your life. And this is why you treat people bad. Like that is not the time. This date is not your therapist. And when you do that, you're putting them in a very awkward space because they don't know you. They know nothing about you other than you loading all this on them and they don't know how to react. See, when you tell friends things like this, they know you, so they know how to help you, they know how to give you advice, and especially if you tell a therapist, they know how to you know, talk to you and get those feelings out in a constructive way. When you're unloading on a stranger, they are taken back and they don't know how to react and you're now putting them in a very awkward position. If someone says, hey, what's your relationship like with your parents? You would be like, oh, I'm not that close with my parents, but what's your relationship like? But you don't need to go into like, I don't get along with my parents because my father beat me every day when I was watching Looney Tunes. No, don't do it. What you can do is 
have a good lighthearted first date. And then later down the line, if you guys are opening up and getting to know each other, then you have the ability to let that person in on those things and then they will now know you more as a person so they can give you advice that they feel able to. Because a lot of people don't like to overstep boundaries. So they don't wanna give advice to a stranger because they don't know how you'll react. But if they get to know your personality, they'll be able to help you if that is something that is very important for you to let them know down the line. Just an extra bonus tip, when you are having the first date, try to wear something that makes you feel confident in yourself and go on a date that really shows your personality and that you will feel comfortable in. If you have the chance to pick the place on the date, make it a place that you love and that you feel confident in being in. Don't go to a five-star restaurant that sit down in tuxedo if that's not your style. You wanna showcase your personality. So these are my tips on how to talk about yourself on the first date. As you can see, a big tip in it is just to be genuine and interested in the person that you were on the date with. That will show that you are charming and of course, positive and fun. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you share, like, subscribe, and comment. Comment below. Let me know any dating tips you might have when it comes to making a first impression, and I will see you next time. Stay creative.